Hi folks, this is Jay. We are visiting a garden on the 16th Street in the Cottage District in downtown Buffalo. It is featured on Garden Walk Buffalo as well as Open Gardens West in New York. So we are with the owner and the gardener, Scott Hill. Can you say a quick hi to us? Hello, I'm actually not the gardener. Joe is the gardener, he's my husband, but I will do as best I can is to try to get everybody through the garden. Wonderful, can we join you for walking the garden? Sure. But before we go to the backyard, we want to show the viewer this lovely a display of color. I believe this is a type of rubagia. It is, uh, yes. And uh, you have different varieties. So some of those are taller, some are shorter. And uh, it's right next to a type of uh, Ligularia, which also have this kind of a similar yellow flower, but they're very different plant. So the rubagia would enjoy uh, sun, but the Ligularia love kind of a little bit of shade and uh, definitely much more moisture yeah but they just look so lovely together so the ligularia really it's it's amazing we planted the middle one here first this was uh -huh. here a few years ago ligularia the flower come out later in season but they have this very dramatic leaf very right. large and uh, so is that a bumblebee sleeping on top of the we have got so many bees here there's one here on this one oh, there it goes just ticked yeah. over <laughs> <laughs> That means this is also a pollinator friendly perennial. Somebody described this garden once as being the garden of the happiest bees in Buffalo because oh. <laughs> we've got so, so much bee balm and, and so many yeah. other things that yeah. are pollinators. I see. I heard so many wonderful things about this garden and the real attraction is in the backyard. It is, <laughs> absolutely it is, yeah. 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 We get a lot of people commenting on the fence too. We had somebody come in from uh -huh. Dansville a few years ago and painted um, the, the coneflowers on the fence. Oh, yes. So yeah. that, that's been actually, it's on the homepage of Garden Walk right now. Yes, it's exactly. It's been featured in magazines and, and quite a few different publications. It's yeah. pretty pretty famous. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I remember seeing this uh, vista uh, quite often online. Visitors just find your garden so amazing. They just enjoy themselves here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I gotta say I'm really proud of Joe for what he's able to do. Uh -huh. You know, I think you'll see when you get into the backyard that uh -huh. He's as much or more of an artist than he is a gardener. He can oh, really definitely. make things mm -hmm. look yeah. just spectacular. Exactly. Look at the hardy hibiscus. The flower is the size of a dinner plate. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it just uh, so 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 they are a different color and different texture from different type of plants. It just create this very interesting combination. Just uh, it's just amazing. And I like how Joe and you use the fence with the, like the archway and with some of the taller perennial to create a sense of uh, intrigue. You can see a little bit of the garden, but not a whole lot. And for exact this reason, it just draw you in, making you want to explore more. So for example, you had a very tall, I believe that's some type of sunflower, it yeah. is. And then with the Joe Pie the weed. The Joe Pie weed. Yeah. We, we've got other Joe Pie weed that are maybe three to four feet tall, mm -hmm. but that thing just has taken off yeah. every year. It, it just yeah. gets enormous. So they kind of uh, block the view of the garden a little bit, but you can see the red umbrella and uh, a little bit of the uh, structure in the uh, background. It just creates a sense of uh, intrigue, you know, which is really nice. And uh, so, yeah, if you do not point out this to me, I wouldn't know all those plants are all in containers. Everything is in containers. We, a few years ago, we counted and we thought that we had somewhere around 150 pots. Wow. Since then, you'll notice on the side over here that uh -huh. Um, we had a terrible infestation of bishop's weed and we had to take out the garden. Right. So everything that's over there is in pots. Now uh -huh. I'm going to estimate we probably have between 200 and 250 pots. Wow, that's very impressive. Yeah. Uh, Joe and you use a container in such a clever way that they look very natural. You wouldn't realize you're visiting a container, uh, primarily container. Right, yeah garden but this just come along so well yeah. and every year everybody asks when they when they first come here what what do you feed these plants because these coleus are so huge yes uh -huh. and really Joe puts just the a little bit of crystallized fertilizer in the ground when he plants it and wow. that's it we think wow. the rest of it is because everything is on blacktop and it kind of radiates the heat up through the bottom oh yeah and that is probably what we think is is uh -huh. giving it you know that extra growth either that or we're on nuclear soil I don't know which. <laughs> Yeah, so I see you have 
a lot of the anu salvia here, the one with the very deep purple and blue color. Right. So they do attract hummingbirds for you, right? They do. We we get hummingbirds back here. We don't we don't see that many hummingbirds in this city, but almost uh -huh. daily there's hummingbirds back yeah. here. Um, yeah, so it's really nice, and, and you can see there's a ton of bees back here as well. Exactly. So, you know, the front yard, we have a few uh -huh. back here. It's, it's a little crazy with the bees. Yeah. It's really nice. Uh -huh. In this garden, it's not just about the flower or ant. You have some very interesting art pieces, like the ants yeah. <laughs> climbing <laughs> on your siding. Yeah. I'm, I'm just glad they're fake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look at this. Yeah, the Job Highway is at least eight feet tall. Yeah. yeah. It's really impressive. It's also a native plant. Pollinators really love uh, to take nectar from it. Yeah. We see you have, uh, in addition to the coleus and the salve, you have all sorts of different uh, uh, begonia. And the orange one is a Mexican sunflower. It's an annual, right? It is an annual, it's yes. An, an yeah. annual. So, so, so where do you and Joe get this insane amount of a plant every year? Yeah. So everybody always asks during Garden Walk, you know, there's always that one question that everybody asks. And Which always, what do you do with your plants in uh -huh. the winter? Uh -huh. And everything stays right where it is, believe it or not. Everything dies out. All the annuals die out. Uh, we don't take clippings of any of the coleus. Everything is new every year. Yeah. So um, first thing at the crack of spring, we're out at the nurseries. We're looking for some things that are different. And I think for Joe, it's really the thrill of the hunt that makes gardening exciting for him. It's, He's always looking yeah. for something new and different and exactly. unique. Um, we spend a lot of time in the southern tier of Buffalo going to a lot of the Amish greenhouses. Uh -huh. And they've really got a good variety of coleus. They've got a good variety of the, the salvia. That's where we started with the black and blue salvia a few years right. ago. And it really, you know, everybody loved it and Joe loved it. So he uh -huh. kind of brought the salvia back as a unifying agent between the uh -huh. whole garden because you can see there's different there's different uh -huh. sitting areas, there's different places to be throughout yeah. the garden. Uh -huh. And the salvia is one of those uh -huh. things that kind of unifies it, makes makes a cohesive. Yeah. Um, so this area is probably one of the most popular and famous it is. garden it is. area on Garden Walk Buffalo. This just, uh, I can imagine. I've seen visitors just uh, invite themselves and uh, yeah. sit down. <laughs> it's really nice. I, I always love it. So Joe is very shy, which is why I'm doing the talking today. Uh -huh. um, so I will come back several times throughout Garden Walk and just check on the yard, make sure everything is still standing. Oh. <laughs> but um, there's always people sitting back here, and I always love that. That's that's what it's for. It's for people to just come and sit exactly. and relax and, and uh -huh. forget about everything. It's it's just for, for peace and, and yeah. you know, just to, just to make it, yeah. you know, Well, make you it are a very gracious sense. gardener and also host, allowing visitors to take the full advantage, to make them feel so welcome, yeah. uh, to enjoy your garden. We really yeah. enjoy that. You know, we've, we've had, I'm going to guess, maybe 30 weddings back here. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so it was when the marriage equality laws were first passed in New York State. Okay. We have a good friend and neighbor who is uh, a chaplain. Uh -huh. And if somebody wanted to come to New York State to get married, but they didn't want to be a spectacle at City Hall, right. she would bring them back here and, and they would get married here. And it oh. wasn't unusual for me to come home from work and be like, oh, there's a wedding going on, I better not park in the driveway yeah. today. Oh. But it, it's, it was just a really cool thing, so exactly. yeah, it, was, it was a great time. Yeah, uh, But I do see a few very, very unique plant uh, surrounding the sitting area. I believe this is a popcorn it's plant. It's a popcorn plant, when yeah. When you rub it, 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 it kind of released like a buttery popcorn, popcorn-like uh, fragrance. And it gets little tiny yellow flowers on it uh -huh. that look like buttered popcorn, so it, yeah. it's a really cool thing. That's one of the finds that we got in Amish country, is oh, wow. um, somebody had that and, and said to Joe, you know, uh -huh. you better take this, people are going to love it. Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. So another plant I find really interesting, or even surprised to see here, it is, this is a southern magnolia, and they have the very thick, uh, velvety back leaf, and they get very large flower, has the fragrant, lemony floral fragrant, a white flower. Usually we don't see this very often right. in Buffalo area. We are in zone six, right. but they are usually a zone seven or eight plant. Yeah, but yeah. probably because of you know, in a more protected area right. in the downtowns, the climate is milder, so 
you have a good chance to keep this. Yeah, right? this is our first year with that, so we're anxious to see what's going to happen with it. There, there is a new uh, bud coming on it someplace. Yes, uh -huh. but it's really taken off this year. It's it's done a lot of growing, which is which is great to see. We just need to keep it for the winter now. See what happens. Yeah, Magnolia is one of my favorite shops. They do so much, and they're easy to grow. That's the important thing. Oh. <laughs> well, then I could do that. I can, I can get the Magnolia. Yeah, and uh, you have another area that are actually separated with the containers, yes, right? Yes, this is all containers, yep. yeah. You, you, so you use containers in such a smart way, divided, it's essentially a driveway garden. It is, this yeah. is all our driveway, and that's another question that we always get during Garden Walk is how do you get your car in the garage? And uh -huh. my car hasn't seen that garage in 20 years. Oh. So. <laughs> Yeah, but they're totally worth it, right? Yeah, it, it is. Absolutely, we'll take it. Speaking of unifying factor, in addition to the salvia, you have this uh, foam head, right? right? Is that how you call it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we just, we just refer to them as the foam head. So Joe tried a couple of those maybe two or three years ago. It was the first time he tried them. Mm -hmm. And they're just styrofoam wig heads that he bought from an online beauty supply store. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're tucked in throughout the garden. And it does a couple of things. It, it unifies the garden, all mm -hmm. these different spaces. It kind of brings them together, gives it some commonality. Mm -hmm. But it also, it gives some fun to the garden. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's a place where you're supposed to come and enjoy it and have a lot of well, fun. So, so I think it is a reminder for the visitor that even though as a visitor, we're looking at the garden, but uh, you are becoming part of the garden. Right, exactly, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have been observed by other visitors. So that is actually one of the beauty of the garden walk, yeah. that you are getting into the garden. Well, I mean, I try to do the video to highlight the garden, but you, if you do not visit the garden in person, you are definitely missing out. Yeah. The majority of the joy, yeah, to be yeah. able to smell the flower, touch Absolutely. the leaf, and the, having a conversation with the gardener. Yeah. And that, that's what we want during Garden Walk. We really want people to just experience it and sit and, and relax and, and have mm -hmm. a good time back here. You know, I, some people will come back and look at it and go, wow, that's a lot of plants, and they'll just leave. Some people, I actually saw a woman crying back here two years oh. ago. And I was like, what is wrong? And she said, you know, I, I, she said, it's just so beautiful. I, I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, it is so, overwhelmingly beautiful, I have to say. It's, yeah. it's great. And that's, that's why I say that Joe is as much an artist as he is gardener, because yeah. he wants somebody, he wants you to feel something when you come back here. And exactly. that's, that's what it's all about well, for him. Well, so you share something quite, quite uh, special with me, that even though this is a particularly colorful garden, but Joe doesn't see it. He does not see color. Uh -huh. he's, he's got a major color deficiency and that's one of the things that that the foam heads does as well is it adds some of those primary colors that he can see and it I becomes see. a unifying agent for mm -hmm. him. Yeah, so that that's another reason why he paints them such such great colors because he can he can tell those colors. Right. So he right. he works a lot with um, textures. That's why he likes coleus so much. Yeah. He'll, he'll get things that have a nice texture to the leaves. He gets works with the values, the hues, more uh -huh. than he does the colors. Right. And he, he, you know, he always says it. I think it makes him fearless. Uh -huh. that he's colorblind. He he doesn't worry about does mm -hmm. this go with that because. You know, he'll say, you don't see mistakes in nature, so uh -huh. it's fine to put these colors together. Right, right. So right next to your uh, garage area, so you have this like a hidden garden. So this is like a more shaded area. Yes. You have a few of the more shade loving plants, like the, I believe that is a canary wing uh, begonia with the chartreuse leaf and the red flower. And uh, you also have the Persian shield, right? The, the one with the... Right. Yeah. Yes. They have this really, really different uh, texture. Also, a little bit of a metallic look. Right. Then you have the oak leaf hydrangea, which just have this very beautiful flower head. And then you have another fountain in the far back corner of the garden. It's just... Uh, you can hear a little bit uh, before getting close. But now you can really hear the very soothing, trinkling sound of the water. It's so soothing back here. We just had a lot of work done on our garage over the winter, and the workers right. were siding the garage, and we were just petrified that this oak leaf hydrangea was gone. Uh -huh. We didn't think it was going to survive, but boy, it really took off this year. Yeah, but well, hydrangea is one of those plants that are really hard to kill them. They're really resilient. <laughs> but for them to bloom well, you need the right combination of uh, the weather and the soil and the, the sun situation. Yeah. So let's take a look at the garden from this end.
this is my first time here, and because I opened my garden, unopened garden, which is the same, exact same time as uh, Joe and Scott would be opening their garden. So I never had a chance to visit this garden in person. Joe and Scott, they're so gracious and invited me to come to see their garden after the, the garden four season just uh, uh, concluded. I'm so happy. Uh, to be able to see the garden in person today. Again, we are visiting uh, Joe and Scott's garden in the cottage district in downtown Buffalo. Uh, this garden is featured on Gardenwork Buffalo as well as Open Gardens, Western New York. But well, thank you again for sharing your garden with us. So glad you could come. Really. It's my pleasure. Yeah.